Look at this. Look, look at that. Look at that job. Look, look at that job. Ugh. You know what the funny part is? Is they supply you with shrink tubing, and somebody just put the shrink tubing on there, and then butt connected it, and then did not use the shrink tube, which is hilarious to me. Oh, they tried here. No, no, they didn't even shrink that. That's not even shrunk. This is amazing. What's up, Life Right Nation? What's up, Life Right Nation? What's up, Life Right Nation? So, tomorrow is Trail Hero, which is why we have the beautiful Abby here with us today, along with her JL, because her <laughs> needs a little work. Yeah. Just a little bit. Luckily, she knows us because we actually got some really cool stuff at the shop that we're gonna install on her rig today, but I wanna go over it with you first because yeah, it's- she's got some that's beat on her on her Jeep. So. Yeah, and this, this right here is definitely gonna solve that issue. Okay, so first things first, somehow by some act of God or some miracle, Abby is still running her factory control arms on her JL, which means she's also running her factory joints, all of which are completely destroyed. The arms are bent, the joints are obliterated. It's time for something new, which is why we got her the Rock Crawler Adventure Series control arms, which are equipped more importantly, with the all new Rock Crawler Adventure Series joints, which are completely service and maintenance free. Now these joints are equipped with compression molded vulcanized rubber over precision machined housing with Teflon lined metal back bearings over precision machined nitrite coated sleeves. Which is all just a bunch of fancy schmancy technical jargon, which ultimately means that these joints are indeed maintenance free and they happen to offer you 360 degrees of free rotation, which means you have super easy articulation as you're crawling over the rocks. Now, although these joints are technically new, they're technically not. And I say that because Rock Crawler has actually been testing these bad boys for years. They actually ran them on the Baja 500 and they actually won. On top of that, they've also run them on vehicles, the Baja 1000 and at King of the Hammers. And this is one of the reasons why we absolutely love rock crawler parts and components because these guys use, abuse, and test the ever living crap out of their parts before they put them on the market, which means that they're not only able to put up with abuse, but they're able to put up with the kind of abuse that Kevin and I are known for dishing out onto our vehicles, which means they'll definitely be able to handle the abuse that Abby will also be dishing out onto her Jeep, which is why these are going onto that today. Now, in addition to factory arms and factory joints, Abby is also running some Fox 2.0 shocks currently on her JL, and they are not holding up. Not only is one of them blown, but she experiences a lot of shock fade when she's off road. So one thing that a lot of people always ask us is what do we recommend? Because obviously on our Jeep and on the Ultra 4 car, we run the Bilstein 9200s. And on the Gladiator, the foster child, which we gave away, we ran the Bilstein 8100s. Now bypass. those are bypass shocks. And for most people, both the 8100 bypass and the 9200s are really overkill, unless you're getting into some really extreme or higher speed stuff. But a lot of people don't seem to realize that Bilstein has some step downs from those. So not only do they have the smooth body 8100s, which are essentially your non-bypass 8100 series shocks, which are still more than adequate for most people, but they even have a step down from that, which are the Bilstein 5160s. And these also include a remote reservoir, which means you have a higher oil capacity, which means you have less heat dissipation. So you're not gonna be experiencing shock fade. They're aluminum body, they're lightweight, and they're extremely strong. And these are actually adequate, not just on a budget level, but on a functionality level for 99% of off-roaders. If you're not doing the really crazy, just extreme beat the ever-living piss out of your Jeep stuff that Kevin and I are known for doing, these or the 8100 smooth bodies are really, really great choices for any off-roading rig. Now installing the arms is pretty straightforward and so is the shocks. I mean, the shocks are two bolts, the arms are two bolts a piece. Um, the best bet is to employ yourself a Chris. And he's actually over here working on, uh, 
on the sister wife. So remember the rear locker didn't work in this, so I got it jacked up. <laughs> My silly self, I was like, oh, the rear axle, just full float, just unbolt it, pull it out. No, we have rear steer. It's just like a front axle where we have to disassemble the entire freaking thing. You've got to pull the brakes and the hubs and the bearings and the, uh, it's a lot. So Chris is actually working on two things. I mean, look, I've got kind of dirty hands. I'm helping. <laughs> All right, you pull the stock arms off. These are adjustable, so in order to get them the same, I just throw some bolts back in them, line them up with a non-adjustable side, and just turn this guy out. One more. Nope. Almost had it. There it is. Now the arms are the same length. Look at you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you want to explain them something? So this is a quick demonstration of how the rock crawler joints outperform a stock arm. So when it's all bolted in there, and this is bolted tight, as you can see, this is your articulation. You're limited to buy what this rubber grommet will give you. We'll install the rock crawler ones real quick and I'll show you what the difference is. So we got the new rock crawler arm in, it's tight, and it just swings. There's a, that poly bushing thing that Brittany explained you about. <laughs> whatever Brittany said whatever, earlier. Whatever Brittany thing. said earlier, this is what yeah. it does. So it gives you limitless articulation. Right, and the, the other cool thing is, is and that you can and actually- And they're poly-filled. Yeah, look at that, side to side, look how slow. But it moves. Yeah. The other cool thing is that you can actually put it up, install it, and torque everything down as it sits right here. So you don't have to do it at right height. Right, because with the stock, you saw the stock one, how it, how it hung up. What you have to do is you have to install it, set it back on the ground, and then torque it all down because it, it's such a limited range of motion. All right. Performance series. Oh, yeah? That's what it says. So this one's the one that's leaking real bad. It's the, the bloaty one. See, it's like out of the seal right there. So, and with the pretty bill shines. You gonna keep them clean? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, we had six boxes of these 5160s, and we thought we had a set, but we were trying to put on this JL. And these are the only two rears that we have, but if you look, this one's too short. This one's, I mean, longer than what was on there. Like, that one's okay, but uh, this one's, Obviously not a matching one. Yeah. <laughs> We've spent a while trying to get this figured out and yeah, we can't get it on this Jeep. So we had to stop the install last night. Got a little bit late because we were trying to figure out the shock situation. We were trying to like, wait, what's going on? Why it doesn't seem right. So even we're not immune from stuff happening and getting wrong shipments. So we have three of the correct shocks and then one was too short. It was for a three inch lift instead of a four inch lift. So it was a inch too short so we're gonna have to forego the shocks for today but we'll they're gonna send us the correct one and we'll get those on so chris is just wrapping up the arms well wrapping up the rear he's gonna start on the front here so i got a little busy inside and dangle chris right here just like just like what'd you do chris he just i just i just i just i just finished it <laughs> just I, finished I just kept working <laughs> like always I just, I just kept working i didn't i was just like Woo, i come outside and the, come outside the jeeps on the ground he's like it's done i'm like did you film? He's like, no, nah, I was just working on it. It's just fine. I, I got it's control track. arms, guys. The whole important part was what Brittany said up front. Other than that, it's just bolts and control arms, right? What did you get, Jilly? Did you kill it? Oh, you killed the moth? What did you do? You already killed it. You already killed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, leave it alone. So we've actually sort of employed Beck to be our weight trainer, body fitness, body fitness trainer, because I do need to lose some weight. I'm working out. Brittany actually has to be on a completely different diet, but she's got us. She's got me and Chris on on a good diet. We're eating all lean meats and uh, we're trying to meal prep. So here, let me let me flip this baby around. We got a lot of guys in the household. It requires a lot of chicken. So we're making a lot <laughs> of chicken right now. So sweet potatoes, which is good for you, right? And then he's throwing this chicken on here, but I don't think you, hold on. I don't think you understand how, what, what is that? Like 24 chicken breasts? Yeah, there's 24 chicken breasts. Is it 24? Too. I was just guessing. <laughs> yeah, so this is what it's gonna take because honestly the hardest part about working out is the diet, right? Yeah, and, like, and, and prep. I don't have the ability, <laughs> let's call it that way. <laughs> I don't have the ability to to do this by myself i don't i just wouldn't do it oh there she is coach Every, Beck. yeah coach Beck. everybody thank Beck for getting kevin unfat and Brittany in shape <laughs> no do we have more somewhere of course oh, okay well a couple of seconds ago you saw kevin struggling with the rear shocks on evie's jeep 
Uh, Kevin had somehow accidentally ordered one number off on the rear shock, so he had gotten one long and one short. So the new one's finally here, so we're gonna stick this in here. Uh, Kevin and Abby are actually down in Sand Hollow wheeling for the day. Got back here, that's my face. We got back here, pulling out these taillights of some origin. I don't, I don't know what they are. Abby didn't like them. So we got these Next Venture Motorsports taillights. These things are sick. One bolt, factory, sucks them in. They fit really nice to the body. These are the same taillights we have on the stepchild, along with all the body armor, the rock sliders, the bumpers, everything that we have on the stepchild is from Next Venture. They make really, really nice stuff. So we're getting rid of these th things. And we're gonna put the really nice taillights in this today. Beck is gonna. I'm gonna get this thing torn down so that we can get these shocks finally installed on Abby's Jeep. So whoever installed these taillights last, uh, apparently cut the connectors off and just used butt connectors. Uh, and the, the factory bolt that goes up there that I would need to put the next venture ones on or your factory taillights, that, that is no longer in there either. So I'm gonna have to get creative and we're gonna have to rewire these taillights, which is my favorite part, as we all know. So let's work on that real quick before we get this. Oh, look at this, look, look at that, look at that job. Look, look at that job. Ugh. You know what the funny part is? Is they supply you with shrink tubing and somebody just put the shrink tubing on there and then butt connected it and then did not use the shrink tube, which is hilarious to me. Oh, they tried here. No, no, they didn't even shrink that. That's not even shrunk. This is amazing. Well, luckily for us, the wiring diagram for this pinout is on Next Venture Motorsports website on the LED light page. So it tells you how to hook these guys up because they chopped off the connectors and everything. So we have this part done. I'm gonna clean this way up. All right, one thing we noticed, couldn't get these into the eyelet, because the sway bar comes up against the shock body. So we're just gonna have to make these links a little bit longer to get this away from the shock more on both sides. This side was actually, this side's, when you even get it close, it's already in the body. Easy fix, we'll just extend this a half inch to an inch or so, just pull this right away from the body. All I'm worried about is that this jam is so much higher in this one than it was in this one. So we're gonna try and center these up real quick before we get any further. At least they greased them. Looks like they only greased one though, not that one. Just like that. Bill Steins. Here's the rears installed. Pretty sweet. Cans, reservoirs, I'll never touch. Full droop, I now have some room in the sway bar. And it keeps a better geometry here so that you don't ever overextend your sway bar. I've seen that happen before. There they are, clean. Rears are installed, but fronts. Have a little, are a little bit more involved. They have a, two bags of hardware. They have a clevis kit of some sort. I don't know where it goes yet. We're gonna have to find out. And then this is the clamp for this reservoir and all this stuff goes under the hood. We'll have to get these inner fenders out real quick so that when we mount the new shocks, the reservoirs go inside in there somewhere. And just like that, the front's installed. It's that easy. As per the constructions, 
in a stock vehicle, there used to be brackets here, and this would sit in that stock bracket. But as you can see, we don't have a spot for the stock bracket. They cut it all off when they put this bumper on here and the anti-rock. So we are going to find somewhere up there to put it. I don't know yet where, so we're gonna do some investigating and see where we can stick this guy. So one option we looked at was to hang it under the bumper in here. I was gonna build a little bracket and that would've been super clean. Oh, except for that, that would be over here. That would be over here. And it would look really sick, but I can't do it on that side. Well, I could do it on that side, but this side has a steer arm in the way and I was worried about chafing and cabling and that sucks. Well, the other option I had is I'm gonna put it behind this in this corner because we have enough room. So I'm gonna put it right here. And the other side has just enough room too. So we're gonna pop some holes in this and mount the bracket on the inside and then just run it on the inside. It keeps all the hoses up out of the way. It'll be in the fender and we'll be good to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this countersink bolt and put it in the hole. Take a nut, use the inside of this countersink hole. And I'm gonna pull it through to dimple this side so that this will sit nice and flush. And you can see, it's nice and flush. It sucked it right in there. And now I got two dimpled, two dimpled holes. Flush, secure. No stick up. There it is, mounted up. Sits inside this panel. There's tons of clearance, and we're about to put it in right now. There goes Iron Man Richie. Probably doing a 16 miler today, I bet. And just like that, side number two is installed. Hose is nice and tight and up out of the way. Let's put the inner fender back on and slap some wheels on this guy. She is done. Oh, no, I take that back. I still got that mess to deal with, but that's easy. I just need a three wire connector and I'll put one over here. So we gotta run and go get a three wire connector before I can finish those up because I'm not going to butt connect it like they did, because I don't do that. And welcome back to the winter of 2021 where you can't find shit in the stores anymore because everything is sold out and supplies are limited. With that being said, I couldn't find any connectors today. I tried like seven stores. So we're going to resort back to, I have these really high-end Deutsch connectors. Uh, they're six pin, which is fine because after I thought about it, I do have to pull reverse and another ground out of these. So I will have five of these pins being used. So I'm gonna have brake, brake and turn, lights, ground, and then out of this one, I'll have a sep I'll have a second ground and another wire out the backside for reverse lights when we get that far. But this is what I'm gonna use today. And so yeah, let's get to putting them on. So one thing to think about when you are doing connectors is the power side is always the receiver. When it's in the plug, you don't have a power probe sticking out basically. So this will be the power side, which will be the Jeep side, and all of the long pins that'll stick, you know, connectors, these will be on the lights. So we're gonna solder these on. Put on a little bit of flux, some solder. I like to wrap it up. I know I should get thicker solder, but this way, if I'm doing any micro stuff, I could use just the single. If I'm doing any thicker stuff, I just double it up. Ten all these guys. Now for this side, we just gotta do it just the same way. Hook them in the bottom, but we gotta make sure we get them in the right spots. So the yellow, white, just the red. So red goes in this hole. White, gray goes to black, which is number two here. Believe it or not, white goes to ground, which I thought was weird too, but that's what they say. Push it all the way through. Nope, oh, 
Too far. Too far. And that's it. They're all in the hole. Now we're gonna test them. We got lights. We got lights. Now all I gotta do is install the housing. That's it. Now that they're finally installed, the fit on these is really, really good. Just like the ones on the stepchild. And they look a lot better on the back of this Jeep. I don't know if she's gonna paint them or if they're gonna wrap them, I don't know. But they look way cleaner than whatever they had on there before. And there you have it guys. Taillights installed, wired up. Got the uh, new Bilstein shocks on here with the reservoirs. Thing looks pretty sick. And that's gonna wrap up this video. Remember guys, you can get all your Lightbrite merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, tell everybody about these videos so that we can make more of them. That's terrible. Anyway, I'll just keep going. Until next time guys, bye. I wonder when these guys are gonna be home.